Are you ready to learn more about how to build awesome technical demos? My name is Leanne Reimel, and this is Expert Corner, where I sit down with Salesforce experts to learn their tips and tricks for you, our Salesforce admins. Please make all purchasing decisions based on currently available technology. Today, we're gonna to sit down with Kara Calloway. She's a VP of marketing here at Salesforce, and she builds some of the biggest demos that we ever see at the company and that you have probably seen if you've ever been to a Dreamforce keynote. I'm excited to hear more from her. Let's go meet Kara. Hi, Kara. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Leanne. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So you and I have worked together for years. I am really thrilled for admins to virtually meet you today and to learn a little bit more about what you do at Salesforce and some great lessons that you have to share with our admin community. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Let's introduce you to our admins. How long have you been at Salesforce? Uh, what role did you start in? Tell us a little bit about your career journey. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll keep it pretty short because I know it's not exciting to listen to other people talk about themselves, but um, I do like to share a bit of my story with people, um, especially those that might be looking for a change because um, I've had some unconventional uh, moves within Salesforce. So um, I started out 12 years ago, um, pretty much as entry level as you can get. I was answering the 1-800 line and replying to the chats that come in off the website. Um, so just really like entry level, just getting my, my foot in the door. And then um, I started to move up in the sales development org. A lot of you might work with sales. You probably know the roles of SDRs and BDRs. Uh, and then when it became time to become a full-blown sales rep, uh, that's when I started to question what I wanted to really do at the company. Um, and at that point, Salesforce was starting to grow rapidly. Uh, it's funny looking back because it seems that we're always growing rapidly, but um, there was you know, a lot of opportunities opening up. So uh, my management was really supportive of me taking a, taking a beat to pause and, and really reflect on what I want to do next. Um, and so I I actually just pulled up the org chart and started looking at people's titles and asking them to take them to coffee to learn more about what they do and what their teams do. And if I could maybe jump on some, you know, pro bono projects with them to, to get more experience, uh, just to figure out what to do next. Um, and that's when I found this magical job, which you know well, Leanne, and that's solution engineering. Um, really, really fun role um, where you essentially are the part of the sales cycle that gets to showcase the technology to customers when they're you know in that buying cycle trying to determine if this is going to be the right fit for them um, so i had a lot of fun with that i actually genuinely thought i was going to do that forever it's such a fun role um, but then i stumbled on this other role through continuously networking um, called product marketing which is ultimately where i'm, I'm at today um, and where the the niche part of product marketing that our team is in is um, similar in that we build out technical product demonstrations, um, but we get to work even closer with product teams and UX designers and stay really close to the, to the roadmap and to some of the, the bigger customers, which is, which is what I love doing right now. I love hearing about your journey. Like I knew a lot of the steps of your journey and I've, I've been lucky to work alongside you in some of those steps. Um, and, you know, one thing I think is so important about your career journey is you mentioned that it was maybe an unconventional path, but, you know, I think there's a lot of through lines to the work that you've done. Like you've always been very focused on what people need to see to understand a technology. Like that's this, this really consistent through line and all the work I've seen you do. And, and I'm frankly, as someone who also started in a very entry-level job at Salesforce, I'm of the opinion that those of us who have, you know, worked with the customers in like a lot of different capacities and started in those entry-level jobs have a really ingrained understanding of Salesforce customers and of admins and of developers, like, cause we were answering the phones or answering cases and really seeing the problems that they're dealing with day to day. So I love, I thank you for sharing your career story. I love it. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned, you know, now today you're working on these specialized product demonstrations, working with uh, product groups at Salesforce. Tell me a little bit more, tell our audience a little bit more. Um, what does that look like, you know, in the work that you do today, what is kind of the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, role look like for you? And, and how are you interacting with customers and, and learning about what you should show customers and, and what does your job look like today? 
Yeah, uh, it's hard to say what a typical day looks like because um, <laughs> it's always changing, of course. Um, our, our team really focuses in two areas. We, we build out the product demonstrations that you see in our keynotes. So if you've ever been to Dreamforce or seen us online, um, you know, any of the world tours, connections, TDX, you know, we're, we're helping build out those product demos that are really forward looking, very much uh, focused on roadmap and what's coming to get everyone excited about where the technology is going. Um, but we also do uh, a bit of work behind the scenes with customers who come to us saying, I really need help transforming. And that's that's a lot of fun. You know, we, then we spend weeks getting to know, you know, them, their business pains, their their goals. And um, we, we show them the full power of the customer 360. You know, even though they say I'm I'm only looking for a service solution. We'll show them everything. And you know, here's what your business would look like if you reimagined on Customer 360. Um, so that's where we, we get to be very creative uh, and, and have a lot of fun with customers. So something that our admins, and that's, we're going to talk more about the keynotes because I feel like you kind of just glazed over that. Like, oh yeah, I work on yeah. keynotes. So I promise we're going to come back to that. Um, but you know, something that you do today that you mentioned is working on building those solutions for customers, people who might be customers who might be looking at kind of the next step in the, in their digital transformation, or are trying to address some really specific business pains. And you're really key in building those technical demonstrations, those product demonstrations to help show them an image of what their business could look like. And one of the reasons, you know, I was so excited. I am so excited for you to be here today and talk to admins is because a lot of Salesforce admins out there are internal evangelists at their companies. So they um, are often in the position where they may be uh, needing to present for additional budget or additional product licenses or additional implementation resources, or just to present for adoption, right? Like as admins at major companies or any size companies, um, often we're tasked with, you know, driving adoption of features and products or uh, expanding what Salesforce can do at a company. And so really there's, there's times that admins are put in this position to need to um, get stakeholder buy-in, get executive sponsorship, mm -hmm. show a vision of what Salesforce can do for their business department or their small business or, or their organization. And so I'm really interested to hear more about, you know, when you think about what does a company or an audience need to see in a technical demo, how do you think through what to include in that technical demo? Because I think a lot of admins out there are, are thinking about how do I present Salesforce to my end users, to my stakeholders, to the people I need executive sponsorship from? How do I present the things I'm building in a way that gets that that sponsorship and that buy-in. So how do you think through that? This actually took me longer than I care to admit to master. <laughs> um, fumbling through the transition between being a solution engineer and in this space where we're marketing big visions to customers, I realized um, there are different audiences and there are different flavors of demos. And I think the, the easiest way to distill it is really there's, there's two primary um, types of demos that you might be building as an admin. Um, you might have a, a demo that's going to help onboard users, right? And it will be very feature focused where you're really walking them through in a very linear progression. You know, the, the workflow that you just built or the dashboard that you've created, you know, to, to help them understand how to use the technology. But then there's this other type of demo uh, for an executive audience where you're exactly what you just said. You're trying to convince them to give you more headcount or more budget or just show them what's possible, right? Um, and so for that, we take a very different approach. Um, we like to think of it more as an outcome-based led project where we're not going to show them every click. We're not going to drill down uh, and filter dashboards. We're just going to show them the, the end result, the payoff. And so if, if I'm building out, um, say, a home screen, I might embellish it a little bit. I might uh, pull in more components than the average user would really use so that it's this just visually stunning uh, single pane view that an executive would wanna see. Um, and if I'm you know, articulating something like a workflow, instead of showing them you know, Builder and all of that, I might just show them the screen with the Slack notification that says, hey, every time that this trigger happens, you're gonna get this alert. And that's really all they need to see. Mm -hmm. So two different altitudes there. 
Yeah. So I think it's, you know, something I'm hearing for our admins to really take away is like, as they're building their own technical demos, starting with the audience first, like who are you presenting to and really centering that audience to help you determine what to include and how to include it. Absolutely. Yeah. That was, that was a big takeaway for me. And after fumbling through it a little bit, I realized, oh, okay. Two very different audiences, two different styles of demos. Most CTOs don't necessarily need to see you click around setup. Whereas, you know, if you're demoing to people who will need to be building and set up, maybe they want to know exactly what that's how demo. truly easy and declarative it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a great feedback. Great feedback. So we did, you did mention, you know, you work on some of these really big stage demos, like the biggest demos that Salesforce does. Um, I know you've worked on many, many, many of our uh, main stage, you know, Mark Benioff's keynotes that we have at, at Dreamforce, we have at other events. Um, and, you know, a lot of our Salesforce admins out here, they're presenting at user groups, they're presenting at um, to, to their customers their, or their users. Um, some of them present at Dreamforce and other uh, events like that. I would love to hear some of your craziest demo stories. I know we all like to hear kind of the behind the curtain stories of, of what goes on with these, because one of the things that's so important that I don't know if maybe our newer admins know, the demos are live. Like we, you all do live demos. So you probably, if Kara looks familiar, it's probably because she was like at that little DJ stand next to, next to Mark's stage. Um, that's probably why she looks familiar. If you're like, I can't quite place it. I think I know her. Um, Cause you've been at the, we always call it the DJ booth, but the demo station at some of the biggest keynotes. So tell us some like fun stories. What's the craziest yeah. thing that's ever happened during a demo? Uh, well, one thing I do love sharing with, with everyone um, is just exactly what you said. Demos are live, which means we have a lot of contingency plans. Um, and so I will say to anyone watching, if you're ever at a live event, and you're in that keynote room, like feel free to come visit us at the demo podium. Um, and we'll actually show you behind the scenes. It's it's pretty crazy when you first see it, how much is going on. Um, we have, uh, you'll probably notice we have two different people standing behind there because we have a primary driver and a backup driver. So if you, if you split the desk in half, one side is all the primary devices. Um, you know, you've got a couple of MacBooks, maybe an iPad, some phones, right? These are all the devices that you see the screen. In a perfect world. Um, and then we have a, a completely redundant set um, of devices where we'll we'll build our orgs that point to you know different servers and each of uh, the sets are on different dedicated networks. So whether there's you know a product or a server or a hardware or an internet issue, you know it doesn't matter we can just seamlessly um, fail over um, so that the crowd still has a great show. So that, that that's probably my advice is like, Think about your contingency plans, um, regardless of the setup you're in. Um, it could be, it could be screenshots of the demo that you've prepared, or maybe a quick video that, worst case, you would just talk over. But um, that always makes me more comfortable when I'm presenting, is just knowing that we have backup plans. Yeah, and I feel like this is a little bit woo woo, but I feel like the more I prepare, I don't need it. Like it's always if yeah. you don't prepare your backup that. The Wi-Fi falls. Then the universe is going to laugh at you and shuts down or something. Yeah. And then you're like, "Oh my gosh!" But yeah, I mean, even even when I'm presenting like internally to a group of my peers in maybe a more casual presentation, I usually grab a quick screencast. It only takes like five minutes. I grab a quick screencast of what I'm going to show just in case something breaks, um, because it's just nice to have that in case you, you know, something happens with your org or something happens with your browser or whatever, because that way then you're not like totally derailing your whole meeting or whatever it was you intended to go through that day. Yeah. So the reason I want to share this story is just to reiterate the importance of having a backup plan. Um, and, and the reason that we have them all in place is because all things have gone wrong and, and we're constantly learning and evolving our process. Um, one, one memory that sticks out was Trailhead DX uh, main keynote a few years back, we had just wrapped our, our final rehearsals. The show was in the morning. We were feeling really good about everything. And one of our very opinionated stakeholders said, we need a demo when we're showing Einstein vision. It was this new exciting announcement that we were making, but he just really wanted there to be a demo to show it to everyone. 
So the crew had already gone home. We quickly synced with the team and our developers worked into the night to, to build out a prototype of this. Um, and for anyone that might be curious what this is, you probably would associate it with hot dog, not hot dog from Silicon Valley. It's essentially when you take a photo of something and then, um, you know, the Einstein's able to like det detect uh, certain attributes and ultimately spit back um, an identifier of what this object is. And so we built it with, you know, a whole bunch of images uploaded into the system. And um, I got up, I think at four in the morning and wrote the script. And then I walked over to our presenter to say, guess what, you have a bonus demo. And she looked at me like, you are gotta be kidding me. I can't, I, I can't put anything else in my brain. I already have four demos I'm doing, uh, you have to do it. And so I went, okay. Uh, and I ran around to the crew and I said, okay, I'm gonna need this device to come down at this time with this cue and I'll need a hot mic and all these things. And so no rehearsals, we just went out and did it. And sure enough, at the crucial moment where we're waiting for Einstein to spit back the result, my, my app just froze. Um, mm -hmm. Just We just didn't have enough time to test it. Um, so I look over to the backup driver and his app worked just fine. So, you know, knee-jerk reaction is to blurt out back up for the, the crew to go to, to his device. And just like, thankfully, I remembered you're on camera, your mic's hot, just sit there and smile and figure out what to do. And so I just sort of leaned down a little bit and did a side kick over to my colleague. And then he, of course, blurted out back up. And I, I think the, the show went on and it was fine. But it's just one of those funny moments where you're like, you just really need a contingency plan for everything. You never know what's going to happen. I know. Like next time you're like, okay, I'm going to need a hand signal if I'm on mic to go to backup. Yeah. And, and sure enough, we do. We have, we have different, different uh, visual signals now. If, if for some reason the driver's mic is hot, of, you know what to do. That's a great story. Thanks for yeah. sharing that. Um, so, you know, I know you have all this experience building technical demos and really guiding that vision of it. Um, and you've worked with a lot of Salesforce admins in your career, right? Like you've seen, I know as a sales engineer, we often would, would, be hearing from admins and, and the needs that they had for their company and, um, and all of that. What are some pieces of advice you have for, you know, Salesforce admins who are thinking about building a technical demo? I mean, we've got so many great community dream and events. We've got, um, dream force for customers present. We've got all of these great user group meetings, like more and more Salesforce admins are showcasing, you know, things that they build. Um, to their community or they're showcasing things they built or, you know, release functionalities and things like that to their colleagues. So I think it's a, it's a great time for technical demos to be like front of mind for admins. And I'd love to hear, you know, what advice you have for admins who are taking the first steps on building their technical demos. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a lot of what we talked about in terms of think first about the audience, right? Is this going to be a very feature heavy demo or is this more of you know, a, a payoff, right? Is this outcome based? And we just want to show what that elevated experience would be like. Um, Cause that'll really dictate your build uh, and you know, your overall narrative. Um, and then I've also learned how powerful storytelling is. So I, I would say, even if you're doing a feature heavy demo you want to walk that audience through really what you're showing them and why it's important. Those are, those are like the guiding principles for every screen we build. We always ask ourselves, what is this and why is it important? Why are we taking the time to, to build it out and to show everyone this? Mm -hmm. I used to have a rule for building demos. Like if I couldn't explain quickly why something was on screen, then I was taking it off screen. Like it wasn't. That's a great I, rule. Yeah. If I couldn't say like, here's why we're showing like this tab or this part of the homepage um, because people's attention is so valuable, right? Like that's the most, the most valuable thing anyone has is their time and attention. And so when you're presenting, people are giving you that time and attention. And so I always think about like the screen real estate that way, like, okay, I've got people's like attention, their visual attention, right? So like, how are we using that and, you know, being careful with what we spend it on kind of. Well said. Yeah, it's absolutely true. So Kara, any other, you know, piece of advice for admins or, or things, you know, I know it can be a little nerve wracking to do like your first technical demo. And I think, um, one thing you mentioned was the importance of storytelling and, and really, you know, a lot of your role is focused on helping people understand the power of Salesforce. And I think, um, for admins that are joining today, it's so important that they know 
how valuable it can be to show that story of how their end users or how their executives can engage with Salesforce. Um, any last pieces of advice uh, for admins out there? In terms of, of presenting these demos? Yeah, or just like taking yeah. the leap and doing their first technical demo. I um, I didn't think we were going to talk about this, but uh, one of my very first jobs was door-to-door -door sales and it was terrifying. And, um, but we were, we were, we were selling educational um, materials um, and we really felt like a strong purpose behind it. And uh, my coach said, it's hard to be nervous when your focus is on service. And I think that's actually so much more true and applicable here. Like what you all are doing is in service of, you know, the company and, and users, like your, your, your job, the reason everyone loves admins is your job is to make other people's lives easier. So if you do find yourself getting nervous about your presentation, try to remember that like it's, you are doing everyone a service and like they will really appreciate and see you and your work. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Well, Kara, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate all the insights you offered and I can't wait to see everyone's great technical presentations after they thank listen you. to your great advice. I would love to I would love to see some. If you send any my way or if you want any any tips, any, you know, bounce any ideas off of me, I would love to help. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kara. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Bye everyone. That was awesome. I can't wait to see all the great technical demos that you all build for your stakeholders, your end users, and your community members. Thanks for joining today's Expert Corner. Make sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you never miss an episode like this. And also visit us on admin.salesforce.com where we post all of our videos, our podcasts and blogs, and other resources to help you, the Salesforce admin, be successful. I'll see you next time. Thank you.